Hello, hello friends. How are you doing today? My name is Mary. This is Happily Ever Ash and today we are talking our spring TBRs. <laughs> pulled five books from my shelf that just scream spring to me. They have been calling my name for a while, as all of these books have, um, and they finally creeped their way on to a TBR list. So I'm giving myself from now, the end of March, until June 15th-ish to read these books. That's what I'm constituting a spring for myself, and I'm pretty excited about my little stack here. I've got a good mix of nonfiction, um, a little bit of classics in there, so let's just let's just chat about them. This first book I found at a library used book sale a couple years ago, and I was so excited to find it. It felt like such a gem, and hopefully this will be the spring that I finally get to it. And that is *The Moonflower Vine* by Jetta. Carlton. This is a family saga. It's set in the first half of the 20th century and we're following like a very rural farm town family and their four daughters and kind of where their lives lead. This was written by um, a woman who attended um, the University of Missouri so very close to home for me. I think the cover is so springy and lovely and I'm just it's one I've been really wanting to get to. Um, this is it says a rediscovered classic on the top there. So it sounds like a gem, lovely book set in the Midwest, which I'm all about some Midwest fiction. So I'm very excited to see what I think of this. And it's really not that long for following Four Daughters Family Saga type book. So I'm hoping this will be a fun read um, to get to dive into this spring. Next one is that one I've showed in, I don't know, multiple videos. Um, it's one that I think is absolutely beautiful and I, and I hope will be a lovely springtime read and that is Emily of New Moon by Ellen Montgomery. I talk about this cover all the time but it's worth talking about again because it's just so stinking beautiful. In Emily of New Moon we're following another young girl who's orphaned and just the antics of her town and the people that she meets. It's another one in a series, but it just sounds so lovely. Emily sounds like someone who I could be good friends with. And in our time of um, social distancing and self-isolation, I could use a good new friend to get to know. So I'm hoping Emily will do that for me. Um, and also mainly I picked this up because the cover is just too beautiful, too springy, not to read, and it's calling my name. So um, maybe the next time I talk about this book it'll be because I read it. Wouldn't that be nice? The rest of these I think are nonfiction. Um, kind of special different nonfiction in their own way. Another one that I've chatted quite a bit about that I'm very excited to finally get to is All Things Bright and Beautiful by James Harriet. It's the next one in his all Creatures Great and Small series. I read the first one a couple years ago. It was so beautiful and comforting. Um, the first one's definitely a comfort read for me, so I want to continue on. James Harriet kind of writes essays, almost like short stories, um, but there is kind of this overarching connection because he's writing his life. They're his memoirs, and I laughed, I cried. They're just so enveloping and why they seem like a spring read to me and really all of these is this just kind of awakening of the earth, this like new um, coming appreciation for nature as everything's budding, the birds are singing, everything is just coming into its own. And so books that have really strong senses of place and atmosphere and really talk about the landscape really feel like spring reads to me. And so this one definitely fits the bill for that. The way that James Harriet talks about the Yorkshire countryside is absolutely stunning. Um, and again, I just need a good laugh, I need a good cry, and I think I can count, count on James Harriet to do that for me. Plus this cover, again, what a lovely springtime read looking cover if you <laughs> ask me. All right, one that I have been saving for the perfect time, and I think now is the perfect time, is Travels with Charlie in Search of America by John Steinbeck. This is one of 
Steinbeck's only nonfiction, I do believe. Um, correct me if I'm wrong in the comments, but um, this follows his journey with his dog across America, really what it says on the title. I thought that maybe I wanted to read this when I was actually on a road trip. I thought that maybe I'd want to read it in the dead of winter when I was longing for a road trip. But I think right now when I'm having a lot of appreciation um, for the people around me and just seeing the kindness and um, just seeing all the ways that humanity can be really good. I think will just really help me connect with this because Steinbeck's tra traveling all over America and just kind of chatting about his his exploration of it and it's kind of another way to appreciate um, my country and I'm ready to do that right now um, but also I hope to go on a little road trip with Steinbeck when I can't and so yes I want to read you the first paragraph of this because it's just lovely. When I was very young and the urge to be someplace else was on me, I was assured by mature people that maturity would cure this itch. When years described me as mature, the remedy prescribed was middle age. In middle age, I was assured that greater age would calm my fever, and now that I am 58, perhaps senality will do the job. Nothing has worked. So. Um, if you're new to my channel, you might not know that I read The Grapes of Wrath a couple years ago and adored it. So I haven't picked any Steinbeck up since. I don't know why. I think he's genius and I think I'm going to like most everything that he's written. Um, but this will be my next little guy and I think I'm ready for some Steinbeck in my life. Last, certainly not least, but maybe one of the most beautiful books in this pile, and that's saying something because some of those are lovely, is Risen Motherhood, Gospel Hope for Everyday Moments by Emily Jensen and Laura Whiffler. They are the founders of the Risen Motherhood podcast, not a podcast I listen to. Look at that gold, this beautiful deep green, but in papers, holy moly. And then there's like these gorgeous quotes with the flowers inside. Mm. Yes, this is just my aesthetic. I love it. Um, Risen Motherhood was Risen Motherhood was given to me um, by a foster parent that I work with. Highly recommended. She thrust it into my hands, told me I had to read it, and who was I to refuse? Um, such a lovely gift. But I think it feels like a really good time to read this anytime because I am a mother, and I think um, reminding myself of truth in the gospel and truth in what I'm doing is always a good time but also in this increased time of spending a lot of time with my spouse and my young little one I'm just I'm here for the reminders so very excited to read this one I think it would also be a good one if you had like a group of people to read it with because at the end of each chapter there are questions to discuss and ponder on so it might be one that I kind of take all of spring to get through and use it more of like a devotional but one that I'm really really excited to to read through and um, ponder and think on so there it is my little stack of my little five TBR book picks for spring what are some books that feel like spring to you. What are you excited to read this season? I would love to chat about it with you in the comments below. Have you read any of these? Do you have any opinions? Let's also chat about that. I would love to know. I think that's all I have for you. I hope that you have a great rest of your day and I, talk to, I hope to talk to y'all very soon. Bye. Share my gratitude with you guys. Um, things that I'm grateful for today. Um, time to have long walks with my sweet babe and my sweet husband. We have been enjoying the weather. Yesterday when we went on a walk, the breeze felt like it was coming off of like the ocean or a lake. It was cool and sweet and refreshing and the birds are just singing like they don't have a care in the world. And I told my husband, I'm like, I want to bottle this feeling and like hold it so when I need it, I can just pull it out. It was just so glorious. We've just been enjoying that so much. So I could not be more grateful for the turn in weather. Um, and even when it's raining, it's like it's still warm and we can open our windows and what a joy that is. I'm also incredibly grateful for um, access to antibiotics. Um, earlier this week, Judah was so fussy and I got strep throat and then my husband got strep throat and then Judah ended up having strep throat and we were all just sad little bundles of sick and just 
antibiotics are amazing. Like Monday, I felt like I wanted to, you know, just never leave my bed. And today is Friday and I just feel wonderful again. And I couldn't be more grateful for antibiotics and access to medicine and all of the precautions um, and the things that our medical professionals are going through to still treat people, treat their patients. Um, wow, like what an incredible gift that is. So, so incredibly grateful for that. And I'm also grateful um, that my little babe is walking. He's just tottering or toddling around all over the place and is toddling a word teetering teetering I don't know um and it's just it's a joy to watch him grow um he showed me on the book the other day where the baby's eyes were that was amazing I'm like you know where eyes are um yeah just to see him expand and grow and learn and change um it's a joy so what are you finding joy and gratitude in I would love to chat about it with you in the comments below that's all I have for you today happy reading friends and I will talk to you later Bye for real.